What's up guys? Welcome back to the 1973 Honda CB504 Coffee Racer build. Chop chop motherfucker. Today we're going to be installing all of the electronics, the lighting, such as the headlight, turn signals, tail light, speedometer, tachometer, unit, it's all one. So I'm excited to see all this stuff on the bike, it's really going to take the bike to the next level and uh, make it a little bit more legal as well. If you missed the last episode, definitely go and watch that first. I reassembled the bike completely. As you can see, it is all in like one piece. So now we're just finishing it up. I'm gonna have to make some kind of a little bracket to mount the tail light, I think. So let's go ahead and start with that. So as you can see, I'm gonna use these stock holes. I think you can see the angle is not right at all. So I'm gonna have to make a little bracket simply just like a piece of sheet metal, like an L shape bend to it, and then I can adjust the angle by bending it different degrees. So it'll end up looking something like that. I've got my license plate here for reference. I think that's a good angle. Yeah, let's go ahead and make this bracket, shall we? Right here. Hands up. Ow, it's hot. That's where that hole's gonna be. It'll be like that. Draw a line there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces off and then score a little line right down the center. Okay, now before I bend this, I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes. Little punchy punch. Little WD-40 for cutting lubricant. Let's drill these holes. I'm gonna use a step bit for my big hole for the wires to go through. Yeah, it's not that hot. It's a deburr it. So I'm gonna have to go past 90 degrees. Just use my vise for that. That'll do. A little bit of paint thinner. Some self-etching primer. Ten minutes later, the primer's dry, so, so I'm gonna hit it with some gloss black, duplicate color wheel paint. the next day and this bracket I made is all dry so I've got the bracket well got the bracket and a little piece of rubber that's actually just toolbox shelf liner I cut just for some vibration dampening so let's go ahead and mount this guy up I've also got a couple of bolts that I cut very short they got to be really short so that they actually fit in between there like that 
Now it's time to mount up the tail light. Let's feed the wires through first. Then I have the same little uh, toolbox liner rubber mount there. Got my two nuts and bolts. Now let's mount up this tail light. That worked out perfectly. All right, since I'm using the stock fender, I can just run these wires right through this little channel. There they are. And then they're gonna go right through this grommet in the rear inner fender. Then they go into these little channels here. And dang it, I'm gonna have to extend the wires like an inch. Ah, oh, that sucks. Now it's time to mount the rear turn signals. Honestly, I'm just gonna drill a hole right through the rear fender and attach it like right there. That looks good to me. <laughs> now I have some washers that I sanded down and then painted black and some little rubber washers that I cut out of that toolbox liner material. First, the black washer, then the rubber washer. Nice. Then on the inside, I'm gonna do another rubber washer, and then black washer. Finally, the nut. And we just gotta tighten them up. So yeah, we got some wire extending to do. First, I'm gonna extend the taillight wires. Clippity clip, clip. Ah. And we'll strip the ends of these off. Same with these. We'll do three that length, about 10 inches. Then we just gotta solder on these extension wires. I got some rosin core solder and a little torch on low heat, just cause I am too impatient to wait for a soldering iron to heat up. Some heat shrink tubing, shrink that up. Now I just have to reattach these guys. Okay, now we can put these wires in these little channel holders. And now we can just go ahead and plug them right in. In order to hook up these Tail light wires, we have to look at my diagram for my tail light. So the brake light is the red wire, running light is the white wire, and ground is black wire. Um, so mine's not white, it's brown. So red wire, brake light, brown wire, running light, black is ground, easy enough. And then over to the bike's simplified wiring diagram. Here we see brake light is yellow, or in my case, green with yellow stripe. Daytime running light is brown. So let's go ahead and hook up the black ground to the green ground from the bike. And then the brown, which is the running light, to the brown from the bike. That actually makes sense <laughs> for once. Then the red wire goes right to green with yellow stripe. Turned on. We have nothing back here, so let's try the brake. Oh, we have brake light. That's good. Well, I got the running light to come on, but it only works with the key in the third position. And when the key's in the third position, none of the attack lights work. So, I don't know, that's weird. Key to the middle position, the running light is off. 
Turn the key to the third position. Running light is on. It's almost like it's a parking light kind of thing. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what I should do there. Because I kind of need the running light to be on all the time for the license plate light. Extending the turn signal wires. I actually had some nice factory wires. So I remember the black is the right turn signal. Green with yellow stripe is the left turn signal. So let's go ahead and plug them in to the factory wires. Looking at the wiring diagram again, see that the right is right turn signal is blue and left is orange. I'm gonna connect my black to my blue and then the green with yellow stripe to orange. And I'll toss a zip tie around it just to hold it in place. Probably my cleanest wiring job yet. We have turn signals. What about the left one? Yep, and the left one works as well. Nice. Now I'm gonna install my speedometer. The, this is the stock bracket. There's two, a separate tack and a separate speedometer from the factory, but mine is all one unit. So I'm not gonna need this bracket at all. So I found a nice chrome bolt, a couple washers, and even a couple rubber washers, just to uh, kind of soak up some of the vibration. Let's do that and then rubber washer we'll do a washer on the bottom and the nut perfect let's go ahead and hook up the speedometer drive cable here's the cable i have no idea if it's going to fit in there i am really hoping it does well that fits oh my gosh it's my lucky day, guys. It actually fits on there. That's awesome. Okay, now we'll go ahead and route this cable down to the wheel hub. This is the only paperwork that was included with my speedometer unit. It has some instructions on changing from kilometers per hour to miles per hour, number of cylinder settings and stuff, but there's no wiring diagram. So I had to search a few different listings on eBay and I finally found one. Black is positive 12 volt, green is ground, black and red is the uh, tachometer signal. So that'll connect to the spark generator wire from the bike to get the tachometer reading. Then white and blue wire is the fuel level indicator, which this bike doesn't have. So we're only going to be hooking up the 12 volt signal and then the tachometer wire. That's it. I just need some connectors. All right, I've soldered on these male wires for the power wires for my speedometer unit. Let's go ahead and hook up black to black and green to green. Doesn't get any easier than that, guys. We just still have to do the tachometer wire, but I don't even have the bike running right now, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But like I said, it's gonna get hooked up to the spark generator or the points wire, one of the two. Turn on the key and see what the heck happens. Nothing. Nothing happened. Oh, wait. Something did happen. How I have it mounted looks kind of dumb. So looks like I'm gonna have to do that or make a new mounting bracket. But I definitely like the looks of that better. We just gotta fix the display. Now it's time to install the headlight, but first we have to install the headlight brackets. Now let's attach the headlight. All the hardware is already included with this headlight. That's nice. And there's even rubber washers to soak up the vibration. That's as low as it can go. Last night I was looking at the headlight and I realized that it was just way too far 
forward. So I moved it back to this mounting hole on the headlight bracket, and I think it looks a lot better now, but what doesn't look better is how long this bracket is now. It's way longer than it needs to be, so I think I'm gonna have to modify this bracket a little bit and just cut this front mounting hole off completely. For the touch-up painting, I'm gonna be using this Rust Bullet Black Shell. Now that the touch-up paint for the headlight mounts is dry, let's go ahead and get these guys on here. I'm gonna do them right side up and then as far down as they go. I think that'll give me what I need. mounts up these turn signals. Man, that looked good. Now we just got a little bit of wiring to do and we'll be all done here. Definitely got some wiring cleanup to do, but just for now, I've got the white wire hooked up to some random 12 volt black wire from the bike. Let's turn on the key and see if the headlight works. Yep, there it is. That, that's pretty bright for a non LED bulb and hot too. There's also a brown wire coming out of the headlight. That is like the daytime running light, I guess. I went ahead and hooked that up too. And then there's a blue wire from the headlight. That's usually the high beam, I think. So let's uh, touch that to the power. There it is. We got high beam. Let's see about these turn signals. And the high beam. calling that good we got everything working obviously there's still some wire cleanup to do I can't really finalize the wiring yet because I am missing most of the handlebar controls got to buy some new ones or figure something out there but there we go we're looking good guys Guys, that was fun. We got the lighting all hooked up and still a little bit of work to do, but we'll do all that stuff in the next video. Before I end it though, I want to open up this package that Liquid IV just sent me. Uh, they sponsor me and I love Liquid IV. I drink it multiple times a week and just uh, being dehydrated in general. So if you want to buy some, please use my code GOLDGUY421 or just hit the link in the description. Ooh, that's cool. So we got three samples of lemon lime, my favorite flavor. How did they know? It's a little keychain liquid IV stick pack holder. Looks like they gave me a nice white liquid IV bottle. This bottle's not gonna stay white for long, but thank you. Buy liquid IV and use my code goldguy421. We're getting close to being able to ride this thing, guys, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified when I make the next video. We're gonna be starting this bike up pretty soon and getting it back on the streets. It's really exciting. Hopefully you guys like the light, lights that I picked out. If you wanna buy them for yourself, check the links in the description. So yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it and join my channel. Be a Gold Gang member. Check that link in the description as well. You guys can get access to members only videos and some other cool perks like this. 
check that out and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out